Welcome to ETH, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Here at End Time Headlines, our mission is to inform our listeners of the times and seasons in which we are in. In Luke 21, 28, we are told when you begin to see all these things come to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption is drawing near. And now, founder and pastor of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scapero. Four things about palm trees every believer needs to know. I want to welcome all of our audience here on Facebook Live and on YouTube. Um, if you have a Bible, you can follow along with me. I've got a couple verses here we're going to read right off the bat uh, and then and then go from there. Psalms chapter 92, verse 12. Psalms 92, 12. This was the inspiration um, for this message. And it says this, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Somebody say a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Now, I don't want to I don't want to deal with the cedar in Lebanon aspect, but I want to deal with the palm tree. Matthew 7, 24 through 25 says this in the New Testament. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, Jesus speaking, and does them, I will liken that man into a wise man who builds his house upon the rock. And when the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it did not fall for it was founded upon the rock. Again, that is Matthew 7, 24 through 25 and Psalms 92, verse 12. These two passages are going to come into play when we start breaking down these four characteristics of palm trees that I want to deal with today and why I believe this is going to be encouraging to you. All right, number one, if you're taking notes, number one about palm trees, they have a distinct appearance and they grow much taller than most trees, even trees that are much older and do not compare to the height of the palms. Uh, in fact, the palm tree can grow up to 190 feet tall. Many times the palm trees outgrow their counterparts in the growth period. Again, let me say that again. One of the most distinct appearances of a palm tree is they, and where they're native to in their environment, will grow much taller than most of their counterparts, all right? Now, what's interesting about this is, again, in Psalms 92, verse 12, we are compared to as palm trees. Now, Jesus said about us that we are called to be the light of the world. We're called to be the salt of the earth. We, you and I are called not to blend in with our environment, but we're called to stand out in our environment. We're called to stand out in the midst of the world. Come on, our speech should stand out. Our conduct should stand out. Our demeanor should stand out. Our walk, our everyday interaction with people and our environment should be a representation of Christ. And guys, just look at the world around us today. Look at the darkness that has en uh, engulfed the world. The world is filled with doubt. It's filled with fear and worry and uncertainty. But we're not called to blend in with society or to be the normal, but we're called to stand out and stand above the darkness that is surrounding us. Come on. The palm tree stands up and it stands about and above those circumstances. Okay, so we're still in number one. And another thing about palm trees is that these trees adapt to their environment. Okay, you're not going to find a palm tree in Michigan. Why? Because the environment is not suitable for a palm tree to flourish or for it to sustain, come on, for it to be sustained long term. So you, therefore, you, it's not native for palm trees to grow in the far uh, northern states, uh, in, in northern states of America or in places like Canada. We've got some folks here from Canada. But the farther south you go, the farther, the, the closer you get to the environment where it's suitable and it's sustainable for it to be able to thrive where it's warm, where it's moist. Come on. And where there's much sunlight, it will flourish. See, as believers, you and I, we have to remain in an environment that will sustain us to grow in our fullness of our stature. Okay? So if you're a born-again believer, we can't, we can't expect to thrive and to 
uh, continually uh, flourish in an environment where it's cold, it's calloused, there's no, come on, precipitation. And, uh, and it's an environment that is totally contrary to what we're instead as believers we are called to to be exposed to much sunlight, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. We're going to break that in even more. Number two, we uh, are called to be in an environment where there is much moisture. Now, when I say moisture, I'm talking about rain. I'm talking about precipitation. And in the spiritual, come on, in the natural palm tree is in places like Florida or the Caribbean or the Bahamas, and there is much moisture. There's much rainfall. Okay, and it helps it to thrive. And as believers, we got to get, we must, in order for us to thrive in an environment that's going to sustain us long term, we have got to be exposed to uh, a moving of the Holy Spirit, to the water, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Come on, the written word, the rhema word, anointed worship, anointed praise, an environment that will sustain us long term. Now, let me give you some more scriptures on this. Deuteronomy 28, the Lord says, I'll make you to be the head and not the tail, that you'll be above and not beneath. Remember the palm tree it stands out and above its counterparts, its other, the other trees in the environment. Psalms 141, David said, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners. Nor does he sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. And what does it say? Come on, somebody. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And as a result of being planted by the rivers of water, it says that he will bring forth his fruit in its season. And his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does, he shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so. They're like chaff that the wind drives away. And we're going we're, we're to break this down even farther as we get into this. So number two, if you're taking notes, the number two thing about palm trees that you need to know is that no matter which direction you plant a tree, and, what, and it could be planted south, north, east, or west, watch this, it will always end up growing towards the direction of the sun oh i love this even if it means that the palm tree has to twist and contort itself to be it will forcefully position itself to face the direction of the sun Whew. some of y'all gonna get this before i i can even preach this I'm going to say this one more time. A palm tree, regardless of what direction, what compass that you plant it, it will always, when it begins to grow, when the root system is established and the come on and the stem comes up and it begins to grow and it begins to establish and it begins to flourish, it will always position itself. It will always direct itself in the face and the direction of the sun, the S U N. Why? Because listen to this: when a believer, as such as you and I, is rooted and grounded in Christ. We will always be magnetized. We will be attracted and drawn towards the S-O-N, sun, because that is where we will draw our source of power from. Come on, somebody. The, the, now, here's where I'm, but again, let me back up. Even if the palm tree has to twist and contort itself, to position itself to, to get to the S-U-N, many times a believer is required in our walk with God and to ensure us to, to mature fully, it will require difficult decisions on our part that may require us to shift, move, and even sometimes relocate in many occasions in order to be plugged into the life-giving source that you and I need to properly grow, mature, and sustain a full potential in the Lord. Come on, guys, listen to this. Our natural desire is to remain in the shade 
where it's cool and comfortable. Come on. I know when I, when I grew up, uh, I grew up with fishermen. My mother and father, uh, or my mother and stepfather, rather, they were avid fishermen. They, lo- they could fish seven days a week, 24 hours a day. They were always on the lake. They always loved fishing. And it was, I mean, we're talking about spring, summer, and fall. Rain, no rain, sun, no sun, clouds, no clouds. When they were biting, when they weren't biting, they were at the lake and they were fishing. And But I'll never forget when I was, and you know, when I was young, I would always go fishing with them. So I always, uh, because of all the exposure to the sun, I had a very good ta- uh, suntan. Uh, in fact, it was too much at times because I would get sunburn uh, and it would be bad at times because I would be exposed to the sun so, so much. So eventually what we ended up doing was uh, getting, we would seek shade. Uh, we would try to find a tree. It may not have been a good place. It may not have been a good location where the fish would be biting, but nevertheless, come on. it don't ma- it, The fish could be biting all day long, honey, but if you're getting burnt and you're miserable and you're sweating and you're getting roasted by the sun, it's not going to be too much fun, especially later on that night when you're going to have to be pulling out some aloe vera and you're going to have to be bathing yourself in that stuff and you can't, come on, you ever had a sunburn so bad that you can't, you're miserable, you're sweating, you're hurting, you're, sl- you're trying to sleep at night and you're rubbing your face and your body up against the sheets and the pillows, and it just hurts, guys. You're miserable. So wisdom comes in, and you naturally try to seek shade, and you try to seek shelter, and and it cools you down about 10 to 15 degrees or more. So the natural inclination of us, guys, is to seek, come on, shade and comfortability. Our, come on, and let him who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying. Our natural desire is to remain in the shade, remain where it's cool, remain where it's comfortable, remain where it's easy. Remain in the comfort zone. But eventually, I hate to break it to you, God has not called you to sit under the tree in the shade and sipping tea all day long. Eventually, He is going to one way, some form or fashion, somehow He's going to pry you out from under the shade, out of the comfort zone. Why? Because it's once we get out of that place and out of that location, that's where you and I will be tested. That's where we'll be tried. That's where maturity comes in. Because, listen, without adequate exposure to the sun, S-U-N, a palm tree will never reach its fullest potential. And just like the palm tree and the spiritual, you and I, without adequate amounts of exposure to the S-O-N, sun, a believer will never reach their full potential in the Lord. So that's number one. That's number two. Now let's talk about number three. Number three, if you're taking notes, palm trees are lean and slender, and they shed excess branches as they grow. Oh, golly, this is so powerful. So in other words, the older they get, the taller they get, the more mature they become, the more lean, the more slender, and the more excess branches they begin to shed so that they can grow to their full potential. The wind will still blow upon them. The storms will still come. But the branches will have, the wind will have less to grab a hold of because they've shed so much excess branches. My goodness. See, oh, you, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Listen to John 15. John 15 says, I am the true vine, Jesus speaking, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You're already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. And he who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. 
Now listen to this. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they shall be burned. Friends, listen, you know what this represents? This represents Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Listen what the, the writer of Hebrews said. He says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily ensnares us in order that we may run with endurance the race is that set before us. Come on, somebody. This is what I'm trying to tell you. There, there's things that when you first get saved, you've got a lot of branches. You've got a lot of branches. And then those branches are holding on to a lot of baggage. You're holding on to a lot of addictions. You're holding on to a lot of weights. You're holding on to a lot of things that the Lord does not intend for you to hang on to. Come on. Habits, addictions, strongholds, relationships, these different things that as you mature, as you grow, and as you begin to go up the ladder, as you begin to go, go uh, Paul said, I put those things behind me and I press towards the mark of the high call of Christ Jesus our Lord. The higher we go in Him, the closer we get to the S O N. Come on, somebody. The closer we get to the Father, the more excess things the Holy Ghost is going to begin to speak to you and He's going to begin to shed those things so that you can grow and that you can expand and that you can come to your fullness. Come on. There's some of you that you've hit a growth. You've hit a, a climax. Uh, now, anybody who does weightlifting, anybody who does workout regiments, you'll know what I'm talking about. When you first start your regiment, when you start first start your workout, you'll begin to see progress. The weight will begin to come off. You'll start gaining weight. You'll start gaining energy. You'll start seeing success. You'll start seeing results. But after a while, you'll become stagnant. After a while, you'll reach a plateau and you're not seeing growth anymore you're not seeing the weight come off anymore you it's almost like you, you reach a plateau and what many uh, fitness experts will tell you is your body begins to adjust and it begins to adapt to the stress my goodness, it begins to adjust to the circumstances and the load that you're putting upon it. And it begins to, you begin to create and develop what's called muscle memory. So your body begins to become adapted to your regimen. It becomes adapted to your cycle. It becomes adapted to your routines. It knows, come on somebody, it knows when you're about to put a load on it. It knows when you're about to stress it. It knows when you're about to stretch it. Come on, to, 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 to a certain level to a certain degree. So what you got to do is you got to begin to change things up a little bit. And see, this is what the Lord does. See, whether you like it or not, the Lord has us in his regimen. He has us in boot camp. He has us in training. And see, some of y'all, y'all gotten used to the little bit of a opposition here and a little bit of adversity here and a little bit of testing here. But eventually the Lord knows this. He sees you growing. He sees you maturing. And eventually he will allow... Come on, greater storms to come. He will allow greater adversity to come. Not because he's trying to break, not because he's trying to break you, palm tree, but he's trying to bend you. And that'll get me to the number four place here in just a second. But see, Jesus said in John 14, 30, when he was speaking to the disciples, he says, I will no longer talk with you much for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. Did you hear that? Jesus was telling the disciples, Satan is coming to test me. He's coming to try me. Even in this time of affliction, this time of adversity, because when he when this was written in the context in which it was put, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was in travail. He was in intercession for the sins of the world. And Satan was coming to try and test our Lord and Savior. But Jesus said, oh, he's going to come. Yes. Is he going to come and test me? Oh, yes, he's going to. But he 
has nothing in me. In other words, what he was saying is, he's saying, guys, he could he could try to test me in my mouth, but I've not opened my mouth. In fact, the word of the Lord says about the lamb that he was led to the shear, but he opened not his mouth. Come on, he didn't open his mouth to curse the, the father who put him in this circumstance while he was raised up as a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. In fact, Jesus said that was for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. He didn't open his mouth and try to reverse something that God had already set in motion. He didn't try to worm his way out of it. He didn't He didn't try to speak curses. He didn't try to speak doubt or unbelief or anything else. He kept his mouth shut, shut even through the persecution, even through the lies, even through the slander, even through the, come on, everything that they put him through. Come on, they couldn't find any hooks in him. Come on, I believe that God wants to get us to a place of maturity. Come on, where he can't hook us with pride. He can't hook us with gossip. He can't hook us with lust. He can't hook us with disobedience. He can't get a hook in us with unforgiveness. He can't get a hook in us with this and with that and with this because we have already shed that off. By the, by the power and by the grace of the Holy Ghost. We've already shed those branches. Come on. Some of y'all listen to this today, and you, you, you know what I'm talking about. You've hit a plateau. You've hit a plateau in your walk with God. And God's saying, step out and allow my Heavenly Father to shear those branches that are not producing fruit. Because He wants you, not because He wants to hurt you, not because He, he wants to, to, to see you fall short, because the Bible says that He that bears fruit, the Heavenly Father will come and He will prune your branches. Come on, He's going to cut off some stuff so that you can bear more fruit for His glory and for His kingdom. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.27, Paul told the church of Ephesus, give no place or no foothold to the devil. Come on, give it no place. Listen, if you've got a Christmas tree up, it's hard to hang ornaments on a branchless tree. Yes, I do have a Christmas tree in my house. Don't get mad at me. Don't send me an ugly letter because I won't read it. I won't, I'll delete the email. This is my house, and if I put up a Christmas tree, I don't worship a Christmas tree. But I, I think Christmas is beautiful. But nevertheless, I don't want to get on that rabbit trail. But I do have three cats in my home, and I told my wife that we need to make a Christmas tree like a palm tree. We need to shave all the branches all the way from uh, – from the bottom half all the way up to the top where it looks like a lollipop because all the cats keep trying to get in the tree. And if I cut all the branches off to the very top where the where the star is, they ain't got no branches to hang on to. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all need a uh, some of y'all need to trim some branches so that you can keep the devil off your tree. Come on. Some of y'all has got so many problems and so many issues because you're giving, you've you've got so many issues that the devil is hanging his ornaments on come on if you'd stop hanging around with the people that you shouldn't be hanging around with the devil ain't got nothing to hang on to if you allow the holy ghost to break that habit break that addiction break that cycle then the enemy ain't got nothing to hang anything on to on the branches so i'm trying to tell you palms shed branches as they grow and as they mature and there's a reason for that, and that leads me to the final point, and that's number four. Although palm trees may look weak and fragile in appearance, because they're not like their counterparts. You look at a great oak, look at a great oak, look at a dogwood tree, look at a cedar tree. Palm trees, in many essence, they look weak and they look fragile in appearance. But here's what you need to know. See, a lot of the world, the world looks at Christians and they say, well, Christians are weak because they turn the other, other cheek. Christians are weak because they, they take a lot of things. They take a lot of heat and they love their neighbors. They don't retaliate. They don't hate their enemies. They bless their enemies. Christians are considered to be weak by appearance. They look fragile. They, they look like doormats. But what they don't understand, but what the Lord understands and what you need to understand 
if we're likened into palm trees, the thing about a palm tree is it may look weak and it look and it may look fragile in appearance. But what God, but what you need to know is the palm tree was created. My goodness. A palm tree was created to bend with the winds and the storms as opposed to break with the winds and the storms like the more dense and bulky trees who has their branches that snap and break under extreme pressure and intensity of storms. My goodness, somebody needs a shout right there unto the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap right there because you and I were never created to be broken by the storms, broken by circumstances, broken by predicaments, and broken by tests, but we were created to bend and not break. We were to be we were to bend with the storm, bend with the circumstances, bend Come on, we were called to bend and not blend. You got a lot of trees out here that blend, but they break under pressure. But we're not called to blend, we're called to bend. See, you and I as believers, again, we I want to stress this again for somebody that's listening to this today because it's going to help you. We were never created to buckle under pressure, and we were never created to break from storms. We were created to withstand the storms of life. We were created to withstand betrayal, but withstand letdown pitfalls and setbacks and unexpected financial storms and unexpected health storms and storms in our marriage and storms in our family. Those who don't have, now listen to this. What did David said, he said, the unrighteous are not so. They are like the chaff that's blown in the wind. Come on. The the unrighteous that don't have their foundation in Christ Jesus are like they're like the bulky, dense counterparts of the palm. They're full of pride. They're full of knowledge, but they have no root in the living Word of God. And you, you, you keep your eye on them and watch them. Watch how they handle a storm. They will break under pressure. They'll break under storms. They will not be able to withstand things that you and I, come on, somebody needs to look at your life today and say, my God, how did they get through that storm? How did they get through that marital problem? How did they get through that health problem? How did they get through that diagnosis? How did they get through that unsaid, unt un untimely death of a loved one, of a husband or a father or a mother or whatever the case may be? How did they get through that car accident? How did they get through that an impossible situation. You can look at them and say, because God created me like a palm tree. I was created to bend, but not break. Come on. Things that the enemy sent your way. The enemy thought he could break you. He was trying to break you a long time ago, break you through drugs, break you through addictions, break you through prostitution, break you come on through this and break you through that. But the enemy failed to remember while you were yet formed in your mother's womb, when you were just a seed, when you were just a seed, God had already created you and fashioned you to be able to withstand all the storms that would come your way. My goodness, I feel the Holy Ghost. See, man, I should have been taken out a long time ago. There were several times I should have died in a bike accident. I could have died even when I was in my mother's womb, when my mother was contemplating on abort in me. Come on, the, the, the Lord, come on, stood up. And he said, no, you're not going to break him. You can bend him, but he's going to withstand some storms because later on down the road, he's going to have a testimony and look at somebody behind this camera on YouTube or Facebook and say, I know what it's like to go through some health problems. I know what it's like to go through some marital problems. I know what it's like to be abandoned by you. Come on, your mother or your father. I know what it's like to be rejected. I know what it's like to go through this or through that. And you can come out on the other side and say, all those things should have broke me and they should have sent me. Come on to the grave, but I'm still standing today because why because matthew chapter 7 verses 24 through 25 jesus told me as long as i build my house upon the rock upon the rock of ages that the rain can descend it can flood it can pour it can be a monsoon the floods can come and they can go come on the devil can huff and puff and blow all the wind he wants to try to beat the house and beat the windows and try to beat the door down but at the end of the day all these things can 
can fall and they can crumble, but the foundation will withstand the storms of life. And I'm going to tell you, just like in that illustration, the palm tree will withstand some stuff. I remember watching the news about these recent hurricanes, and every time, inevitably, the weatherman will be standing on the camera and you can see you can see trees snapping you'll see billboards blowing over you'll see windows busting in but these palm trees are bent all the way over and the winds are just whistling off of the come on the branches the the rain's just whistling off the branches and then eventually i don't know how long the storm the storm can last one day two days three days four days seven days some of y'all's been in it for months some of y'all's been in it for years but i'm gonna tell you honey eventually the cloud is going to cease. The rain is going to stop. The winds are going to stop blowing and the sun is going to shine again. The S-U-N is going to shine again and you're not going to be bent over anymore. But come on, just like Jesus told the woman of Abraham, uh, the daughter of Abraham, he says, woman thou art loosed and she stood back up and she continued her race. Come on, the, the S-U-N is going to shine again in your life eventually. But until it manifests in the natural, come on, you got to believe that the S-O-N, the Son of the living God that you're connected to, is the one who's going to bring you out on the other end in Jesus' name. So let me pray for you guys real quick, guys, while we're right in the flow of this thing. And then right after this, guys, I want to give you some information on how you can support this ministry. You can keep in touch with this and so on and so forth. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every individual. I thank you for the palm trees that are watching this, the palms, the, those stories. The, the, those the, those believers that were created to withstand storms, withstand circumstances, withstand the trials, withstand the tests. Father, I thank you, Lord. Lord, I, I see there's there's so many individuals here. There's some that they some of the elders here, some of those mature believers, they're amen in me. And they're saying, yes, I've withstood so many things. I'm still standing. I'm still standing because I've withstood these storms. And there's others that saying, brother, I'm, I feel like I'm about to break. Come on. I know you feel like you're about to break, but just hold on. Just keep bending. Come on. Keep bending with the wind. Keep bending. Come on. Just, just, I know just sometimes you just got to hang in there, hang in there through the storm and just, and allow the Lord to carry you through, carry you through some of these storms. He delivers you from and others. He carries you through, but I guarantee you this, you're going to come out on the other end. You're going to come out on the other end. And father, I pray that you'd give us the grace, give us the mercy, give us the ability, give us the strength by the Holy ghost to begin to shed off these branches. Let us lay aside every sin and every weight that is so easily besetting us and hindering our growth, hindering our progress in you, God. Whatever it is, whatever it looks like, God, help us by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let us not withstand the shears of our Heavenly Father, the vine dresser, but allow us to submit to His shears and let us let Him prune some things off of us because we know at the end of the day it may hurt for a season, but we're going to grow, we're going to mature, and we're going to come out on the other side as the righteous palm that God created us to be. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, come on, amen and amen. All right, guys, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. That's where you're going to find us. That's where you can subscribe to us. That's where you can bookmark our site. That's going to be our main website address. You can keep up with this one digest every single day in your inbox. It'll come. It'll keep all of our news and headlines, our prophetic updates, special updates, special reports, these encouraging words, words of exhortation, words of edification, correction, rebuke at times. You, I believe you'll grow in the fullness and stature of what the Lord's called you to do with the help of the Holy Ghost and this ministry. If you'd like to support this ministry, perhaps this is your home church. Whatever the case may be, whatever your relationship with is with this ministry, that's between you and the Lord. But we want to give you an opportunity uh, if this ministry has blessed you on a continual, continual basis, day by day, week by week, um, 
we want to give you the opportunity to sow uh, into this ministry. And you can do that there on Facebook Live right there under the title. There's a link. It says Support ETH. There's a link right there. If you click on that link, it'll take you to a page um, uh, where you can give electronically or you can give by check or money order. Uh, for you guys that wish watching this by Facebook Live, if you wish to give by check or money order, that is In Time Headlines, P.O. Box 2312. That is Clarksville, Indiana, 47131. That is our physical mailing address for those that wish to give by check or money order. You guys, by YouTube, all this information is going to come at the end of this as well so that you can be refreshed on how you two can partner with us and support this ministry. So as always, guys, we love you. Um, we appreciate all your support, your letters, um, your encouragement, your prayers, and so on and so forth for this ministry. So we're going to sign out for today. Please share this with people. Anybody that you know that will be encouraged today by this word, share them, share the link to them, tag them in this, invite them to this. You guys by YouTube, you can do the same thing as well. Um, we, we plan on being back on here tomorrow um, with a, another word of encouragement. Um, that I've got something on deck for that. And then next uh, next Monday... Um, I want to talk about it is we're going to do a, a kind of a, um, a a prophetic update. Uh, there's some some stuff that came out that was recently uh, reported on the news that I want to talk about that I believe every one of us should pay attention to and use wisdom on. So be looking for that next week. We're going to talk about that. And of course, uh, whatever topics that are trending as well as uh, the message of the gospel as well. So we love you guys. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow. We hope that today's word was a source of blessing and encouragement to you and your family. End Time Headlines is a ministry that provides weekly teachings to equip believers and inform the discerning of the signs and seasons in which we are in. If you would like to help support this ministry with a gift of any amount, you can do so electronically by visiting our website at endtimeheadlines.org, where you can sow a one-time gift or set up monthly partnership. If you would like to give by check or money order, you can do so by writing to End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 2312, Clarksville, Indiana, 47131. Thank you for your generous support and partnership to End Time Headlines.